I'm here with Dara Sumita Nanda Avaduta. Namaskar, Dara. Namaskar. So tell us about what got you into Ananda Marga and initiation. Back from the very young age, when I was eight years old, I had a very strong desire to see God. I started my search to see God with the help of my mother because she was a very religious lady and she used to go to temple, she used to visit the priest. So I used to go to I used to go with her to the temple to the priest, meet the priest and ask many questions. But then I I was asking to my father questions, how to see God, where to find God, my uncle, but nobody can give me any satisfactory answer. I was very disappointed and frustrated. Then I was just staying with my uncle and he was in a government job. So every two years or three years he's transferred to one place to another. So when I was in high school, in the 10th grade, he was transferred from one place to another place. So I accompanied him. I came to a new place, new school, new friends, everything new. But it was sheer Baba's grace that some of my classmates, they were doing Anamarga meditation. So I asked him, why do you do meditation? And they said, because we want to realize God. We want to feel God. It is not enough to believe in God, but you have to feel God. So I said, have you felt God? They said, no. But now we feel and we are sure that we will realize God 10% in this life. I was... <clears throat> But I said, you know, I searched for God everywhere. I couldn't find. And I was a student of physics. We were all studying science. I said, science has never proven the existence of God. So how can you say that God exists and you can feel God? They said, there are so many things you cannot see. You cannot see the air. You cannot see electricity, but it exists. You cannot see the air, but you can feel the air because when you feel cold, when you feel hot. Similarly, you cannot see the God, but you can feel God. If you concentrate and meditate on Him. So I said, how you meditate? Then they said, <clears throat> okay, for that, you have to learn the process of meditation from a qualified acharya. I said, oh, that's a long process. And uh, I'm not interested because I was very skeptic. <laughs> if they really, <laughs> it's really the real path, the true path. And then we used to have discussion, you know, every time. And they tried to convince me, I tried to convince them. <laughs> it passed six months. Then one day they said, okay, you come and meet our coordinator. And you can ask him all the questions. So I went, he was the new secretary. <clears throat> he was a labor inspector and he was very close to Baba. So she told me in the first meeting that to feel God, you don't have to believe and you don't have to, um, to see God, you don't have to accept the existence of God. You accept the existence of God as a hypothesis and you experiment and you find out for yourself. I said, that's very scientific. <laughs> So, I learned meditation. I was initiated into one and Marga meditation. Not by him, but then I said, yeah, came. And then he told me, you do experimentation of meditation. But this experimentation is done in the laboratory of body and mind. Not outside, inside. And I'm sure you will feel the God one day. So I started doing my meditation, it was about two months, I was being very sincere in meditation every morning, every evening. And one day in the morning, <coughs> I was doing my meditation and 
I felt something is overpowering me, you know. Some, some very strong energy that I am getting lost. I thought I was going to die. So I resisted, resisted, you know. But at the end, this, this power, this energy took over and I was lost. I forgot where I was, what I was being. And, but I had a very nice and soothing and pleasant feeling. So I started enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. And then I completely got lost. Nothing. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. And as if I was in a different world, you know, completely different. The world where there is only peace and bliss and joy. And I was in that state for about two hours. And then, in the meantime, my brothers were knocking at the door. They wanted to get something, and it's what happened. He never closed the door this morning, he closed the door, and now she doesn't open. They were afraid something happened to me. They were about to break the door. <laughs> then, after some time, I became normal. But actually, I wanted to continue that experience, <clears throat> but I had to become normal. And then I opened the door and they asked me what happened. Oh, I said, I just fall asleep. <laughs> you, they will not understand. They are too young to understand. <laughs> then in the evening I went to see this unit secretary, <laughs> the coordinator of Panamalga in that place called Jaja, which is very near Zamalpur, only three hours by train. What were your reasons? Huh? What were your 1963. 1963. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I told him my experience. And he said, that what you have experienced is a glimpse of God. It's a microscopic expression of that supreme consciousness. But if you continue your meditation, you will realize him fully. You will feel him 100%. Just continue doing my sadhana, your sadhana. So I became more serious. You know? I was doing longer meditation. I was very regular in Dham Chakra. And <clears throat> then he was telling me many about his story. So I became very interested to go to you know, Zamalpur, which is only three hours by train from where I was initiated so that I can, I can meet Baba. But it passed like that one year, we couldn't go. There were a group of students, and one day we decided, no, we have to go. So we set the date. And then <clears throat> we were about seven, seven students. So, but when we decided, I had no money. Because I was in a place now where my uncle, my uncle was more, no more there. He was transferred to another place. But I couldn't go with him because I was, I was in the last year in the high school. So he said, you stay in the boarding house. I will send you money every month. And you finish your study here. So I said, fine. So I also felt independent, you know. And <clears throat> that's the time I thought, ah, now it's the time for me to go and see Baba, you know. <laughs> so I was thinking and thinking, I said, never mind. The money should come from somewhere. If I have to go and see him, you have to see my guru. Then just one day before, my father sent me some money order. From time to time, he used to send me also some pocket money, you know, some extra money, because he thought the money that my uncle sent is not enough. <laughs> so time to time, he will. So just one day before, we were going. <laughs> well, I said, now is the time for me to go. And the next day, we were all about to go. And then one of the students became very sick. High flu, he was very hot. And we thought, how we can leave him, you know? So what to do? But we all wanted to go. And then I had heard before that nothing is impossible for Baba. Baba can touch and you can be 
you can get rid of any kind of disease. So I talked to him and I convinced him, let's go be together. You're not alone, you're not going alone. Let's see what, what, what happens. So we went, we went to the market. And those days, very few markets, you know. <laughs> so, um, and those days, all has the, <clears throat> all markets have the right to have personal contact with Baba at least once. So, uh, next day, Baba, you know, Baba used to come to the Jagruti every morning before he go to his office. And every evening, before he go for the evening walk. So, Baba came in the morning, next day, and we all line up for the personal contact. And then, <clears throat> one, two, and third was this brother who had a high fever. Mm. So, he went inside, he did Sashrang Pranam to Baba. And Baba asked him some questions. Who you are, yeah, when you were in the street. <clears throat> and <clears throat> are you doing meditation? And then Baba said, but how is your health? He said, Baba, no, he didn't want to. He was trying to say, Baba, I'm sick and I need help. So he said, no, Baba, I'm okay, I'm fine. Baba said, no, no, no. You are sick, you have high fever. Come closer to me. And Baba just blessed him, he blessed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the head. He was also repeating some mantra, you know. <laughs> and then suddenly he felt relieved, as if he was never sick in his life. As if he is really in bliss, in, in joy. And Baba said, let him sit in his lap, you know. Caressed him and he said, Now from now on you are a new man and you have to do some ideal work, you have to become an ideal human being. And you can do it by your sadhana service and sacrifice. And then he came out. After that, it was my turn. So I touched his body, really, he had no more fever. His body was normal. Before I asked him any question, he sat down and started doing meditation. Then I went and I did Sashna Vanam to Baba. <clears throat> then Baba said, in the past, we have committed some mistakes. I said, yes, Baba, I have committed some mistakes. You did the punishment. I said, yes, Baba. OK. Open your palm. Baba took his stick. And in swim breathing hard, he just touched here. And they said, <clears throat> Baba said, OK, now, <clears throat> You have to do something extraordinary in your life. And I said, Baba, what? Then he said in, in, in Hindi, go and by propagating dharma, destroy your samskara. Go, by propagating dharma, destroy your samskara. Mm -hmm. And you become a new human being. And you have to do something for the new humanity. I was very, very inspired. And then Baba let me sit in the app. You know, he kissed me. I kissed him. It was, means what I can say in short that I never felt so much love even from, from my mother and father. He was my most loving father that I have ever met. And I felt that I really got the treasure. I really got what I wanted to get in my life. And then I went back, went back to the unit and I talked to the unit secretary. And then I told him experience my experience. He said, that means Baba wants you to become an Acharya, to become a full-timer. I didn't believe him. <laughs> then, but I became more and more active, you know, being more and more people get initiated, then we built the Jagrati all together, you know, and uh, all that. And then <clears throat> I finished my high school, I went to college, university. And when I was in the last year in the university, I went to attend DMC in, in Patna, it's a capital city of Bihar. And in the course of DMC, I felt that somebody is telling me from inside 
you have to go. You have your time has come. And then I went for training. I just wrote a letter to my family that I am training in India and I will come back after some time. So that was in 1955. Those days the training were not long. I was in the training center only for three months. So the end of 1965, I became the Sahib of Marga. So, <clears throat> then I became a Sahib in 1965, and I was working in Surat in Gujarat. And then Baba came there to conduct DMC. So, we had made arrangement for him to stay in the Margi's house, who is a businessman well to do all facilities. And then <coughs> from the train station, we received Baba, and I was sitting beside him in the car. And then he's telling me, Where is your turban, my boy? At that time, I was only Brahmachari, I was not at uh, Abhidhuta. But those days, it was not required for the Brahmachari to use the turban. But Baba had newly introduced, and I didn't know how to put on the turban. <laughs> so, I didn't put on the turban. Anyway, we brought Baba in the room, and as he went into the room, Baba became very, very upset, very angry. Who has made arrangement for me to stay here? Call him. I was afraid, you know. So I called those brothers, the Aris, and the brothers who had made the arrangement. <coughs> and Baba said, why you have made arrangement for me to stay here? But if you have made the arrangement, I will stay here. But I will not drink even a drop of water here. Very, very upset, very angry. Then <coughs> we have to immediately hurry up and make alternative arrangement. That was a, Mar a Margi, he was a principal of a uh, college. He was very honest and very, very good, very good, very good Margi, very sincere. So then Baba stayed there <coughs> and later on Baba told us he didn't want to stay in that house because this man is immoral. I cannot take anything from his, his place because I cannot use something which is, which is earned by immoral means. And <coughs> there Baba was very happy, you know. And <coughs> then <coughs> we went to the train station to see him off. And then when Baba left, I was crying. I was crying. Wow. And, you know, I sat in the car and I was lost again. Same, I was the same kind of feeling that I had one time, you know, in the beginning. I, I was in bliss. And then the brothers were saying, oh, you were in Samadhi. Baba has really blessed you. You know? And I felt <coughs> that Baba really wants me to do something great. And then after that, Baba posted me in Chennai, Madras, South India. And then they started telling, oh, now Baba is bringing you to go abroad. Because you have to practice English. Because yeah. South India, those days you cannot speak Hindi, nobody understands. And that was in 1968. So I was there learning at Children's Women's School for about nine months. Then Baba called me to Sitamari, where Baba was conducted DMC. And then <clears throat> I, was, I was there a few days with Baba. Then I went back. And when I went back, I received the telegram. Reach Anachi immediately. So <clears throat> I waited until another Dada came, whom I handed over the charge. And then I went to Nancy and Dada Pranamananda was the office secretary. And he said, are you ready for higher responsibility? I told him, yes, he Baba wants. And then <clears throat> he gave me the RS guidebook to write down. 
and then he sent me to Mumbai where Baba was conducting another DMC. And there, there were three of us who were initiated by Baba himself, Kapalik initiation. And the first night I went to cremation ground to do our Kapalik meditation. I saw a body burning right there, you know. <laughs> yeah, body was burning, you know. Somebody had just cremated, but it took time for the body to finish burning, so they left. Nobody was there, midnight, you know. <laughs> but I was not afraid. I did my Kapalik meditation. And then, <clears throat> after we did the Kapalik meditation, for those years, three nights, then Baba made us Abhaduta, gave us a new name <laughs> and took the Abhaduta oath. Also, when you become Kapalik, you have to take oath, Kapalik oath, Abhaduta oath. And I became Abhaduta in 1968. And then <clears throat> I was working in the Jasper, you can say, Less than a year or one and a half years. 1969, when Baba came back from the Philippines, his second visit, I was walking with him in the in the field, you know, in Gaur. Baba used to go walk in the evening. And many times I had the opportunity to go for a walk. <laughs> and then Baba started telling me <clears throat> all about Philippines. Before every time Baba met me, he would tell me about the US. Because my first question was, is this new old sector? So I was wondering. The next day I was told, Baba had changed your posting. Now you go become SS Manila sector. You go to Philippines. And then <coughs> I was, <coughs> took some time, prepared the passport and everything. And I went to Manila. <laughs> and then this Dada met me. <coughs> in the airport, and she was posted as SS New York sector. So we were together with two months, because he has got English visa and everything, but he got his visa very easily. I, I was, I couldn't go to New York sector because I couldn't get the visa. So, <clears throat> and then she announced, I didn't know, in the newspaper that he's living on this day, so many marriages. They had a very small apartment for the child in those days. And everybody was crying and screaming, Dada, don't go, don't go, you know. Then we went to the airport, we saw him, and still people are crying. And I said, when I go, nobody should cry. <laughs> of course, then I continued. Then I was there, 69, 70, 71. Then, before I went to the Philippines, there was a DMC in Patna. And Baba called me again. <laughs> and then I met Baba Prasnath. And he said, remember, <laughs> MCT. I said, what is that, Baba? He said, M for, stands for misunderstanding. She stands for Kunanan. It's the name of the Margi. And T stands for Tactics. So what? He said, no, no, you just remember these three words. He go. I thought Baba would tell me something about the history of the Philippines, how the people are, how the culture is, how I should <laughs> behave. Nothing, just. And then <clears throat> when I arrived in the Philippines, <clears throat> especially when this, people started comparing me, you know, with the other brother who, who was, he was, experienced person. He was there for, I think, four years already. And he knew how to deal with the Filipinos. <laughs> and, you know, he was uh, very good in talking. I was just new, I was only 22 years old. <laughs> Even I didn't have the confidence to speak English very well. <laughs> but, when I arrived, this guy told me there's already a lecture organized in the College of Nursing, and there will be 200 nurses. And I'm not going to speak 
I will introduce you, you have to speak. I said, how? I am not prepared. I cannot speak even ten sentences in, in English correctly. How you expect me to, to give a lecture to the 200 students? And that is for 45 minutes or one hour. He said, no, you come with me. And thus you stand up and do the dhyan. Remember Baba and say Baba to take over. So I just did that. And then I spoke for 45 minutes, more than 45 minutes. Immaculate English, no mistake. And they were so impressed, they asked so many questions, you know. And then, um, after he left, there was a misunderstanding between me and those Marquis were very close to him. They were comparing him, comparing me with him. And I am a different person. I cannot be the copy of the Dalla. So, <laughs> They started complaining. Then there were some Margis who understood me very well, and I had a good relation. They said, Dada, just, <clears throat> we should sit together, all of us. You and these Margis who had some complaint against you and me. So, three person from that, that side, and three person from other side, and me. We sat down. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> And we started talking. And then these Margis were meditating, mediating. They said, uh, tell us frankly, openly, what is your complaint against Dada? And the first thing they said, I never smiled. <laughs> then I told them, I'm, I'm so sorry, you know. I was brought up in India. I was not taught that every time I meet somebody, I have to smile. I have to still learn. But I will learn. And they said, I'm too frank. I said, yeah, I'm sorry because I have to still learn how to talk with you people. So far I know how to only talk with the Indians. <laughs> because you know in Philippines they never talk directly. They go around and around, you know. Yes. <laughs> but I was too frank. So Unconsciously, I hurt them, you know. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then they said, when people come and visit me, I don't talk to with them. I said, if they ask me questions, I answer. But still, I'm not so, <laughs> play, you know, so open that I start the conversation. I don't know how to start. You don't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like that. And I said, I'm so sorry, but I will change. I will do my best to change myself. But you know, I was trying to change, but you know, it takes time for the human being to change. In the meantime, they became more and more distant. And then <clears throat> they started another Anamarga, you know. Not Anamarga name, because they cannot register. Same name. <laughs> So some society, you know, Ananda Yoga Society or something like that. And they called a yogi from India, a professional who was teaching asanas, meditation and all that. And they're trying to compete, compete with me. So then from this, I realized why Baba told me MCT, misunderstanding. And I was not tactful when I was dealing with the people. You know, I should be more tactful. And the third one is Kunanan. Kunanan was a very active and dedicated Margi. And he has found a place in the center of the city. And he used to give lecture every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for free. And so many people come about all about yoga and Marga and all that. And he used to invite me. And she has misunderstanding with the previous Dada. <laughs> So they didn't like each other. <laughs> so when I came, he became very close to me. <laughs> and he used to invite me always in his house, you know, sometime for lunch and breakfast, we sit together. And every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we meet. Because 
She will give a talk first and then he will let me talk. And I give the answers of the questions. And he used to help me. I was learning actually from him. And then he was publishing a magazine called Elementary Yoga. And that magazine, though it's very difficult to print and very expensive. So he was just, you know, Xerox. You know, on the he will make that thing. A copy. <laughs> yeah. And he used to give me and I used to sell it to the public, to the Margis who several months. And he said, Brother, all the money is for you. <laughs> so and he used to send three copies. It was monthly, once a month, to Brazil headquarters. So one time he got a letter from the headquarters. But your magazine does not reflect the philosophy of the Marga. You are all writing about yoga, this yoga, that yoga, and all that. But your philosophy, your uh, magazine does not reflect the philosophy of the Marga. Which is true. You know, he will get something from this yoga book, that yoga book, this book. Because he thought Anamarga philosophy is too difficult for the beginners. So, but he got very hurt, and then he left. After some time, slowly we became distant, and he left. And he joined a spiritual, a spiritualism, a spiritual healing organization. You know, they, they get power and they heal people from any kind of sickness and disease. So that's why Bob said Kunana, <laughs> because he was not going to be in Anamaga. He was going to leave Anamaga. So that is the MCT. Misunderstanding Kunanan and practice. I understood when I arrived in the Philippines, not when Baba told me in India. <laughs> yeah. So after that, you got another posting. Yeah? After the Philippines, you were posted somewhere else? Yeah, then I was there in the Philippines for about two years. 59, 70, and 71. And then when I was doing meditation, I started missing Baba, crying, you know, feeling his absence so much. Then I started doing my dhyana and tell Baba, either you come or you call me. Either you come and call me. And then, to cut the story short, I got a telegram. After I was doing this for about two months, did Shivansi immediately. So, you know, I went to Nancy. I met Baba again. I had a personal contact with him. And then he told me many things and he said, you know, now I give you a job to do. And he said, there are two dadas whom I have posted. One I have posted in Sydney sector and another I have posted in Hong Kong sector. So you have to take them with you and you have to send them where they are posted. Oh, I was so, I have no money, you know. <laughs> How I will take this data? But then Baba gave me an idea. He said, they have no passport. So from the Nazi, <coughs> I brought them to, <coughs> to Delhi. And I continued to travel in Nancy and they filled the application for, for the passport. And when the passport was ready, they informed me, and I sent a PTA, and in those days, please pay ticket advice. Mm -hmm. So both of the Dada first came to Manila, stayed with me for two or three months. Then first, I brought this Dada, who was posted in Hong Kong, very near. Mm -hmm. And he didn't visa, because Commonwealth, you know, Indian passport, don't need visa for Hong Kong, those days. And we were there with him for one week, you know, so expensive. We were staying in a hotel where you can never see the sunlight. All the time, you know, light, air. Then I said, oh. But I contacted some newspaper and we had an interview. And our photo with the article was published in the second page of the one very famous newspaper. And then I searched, searched around and I found a guest house for Dada. And I paid for his rent for one month. And I gave him some pocket money and said, now, Dada, you are on your own. <laughs> and I went back to Manila. 
Then I had this dada, another dada, his name was Adios Ananda Abdul, to apply for his visa for Australia. So he applied in the embassy and they gave him only one week. And then he said, Dada, what I will do there in one week? It will be a waste of money, you know? I go there one week, but I cannot do anything. So you better inform our headquarters, GS Dada, that this is the situation. So I sent them a message, you know, by telegram, explaining everything. <laughs> then after a few days, the, the reply came that this Dada Advisan now become the essence of Manila and I become the essence of Sydney sector. So I have to go to the Sydney sector. But I accepted it very graciously because I always wanted to go to a new place. And they start from scratch, you know. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so I applied for a visa and they gave me one month. So I now I it was my time to go. So I told you that I didn't want anybody to cry. <laughs> so they gave me they called this leader party, farewell party, you know. And the Margaret have collected some money for me, they gave me about Five, six hundred euros or whatever. It was a lot of money, you know, <laughs> those days. And then there was a travel agency and one mother, she was working. So she got me a discount ticket, 50% off. She got me a return ticket to go to Melbourne and back Manila. One year, that is ticket. So um, the day came, I took the flight and I went to Melbourne. So I arrived in Melbourne. It was a autumn season, and I went from airport to YMCA because in Manila they told me YMCA has cheap rooms. Mm -hmm. So I became the member of the YMCA. You know, I had the card, so I arrived in YMCA and I booked a room for two days, two days, and then <clears throat> all night I was in a flight, so I was very tired. So I took a bath, did my meditation, I slept. Then when I got up, I was very hungry. So I went to the store to buy something. Then I realized I didn't have enough money. Because I was supposed to pay the wine only one day. But I don't know why I decided to pay for two days. Okay, so I fast today, no problem. And it was a weekend. I arrived on Friday. And the next day was Saturday. So the banks are closed and those days they will not accept US dollar in Australia because the Australian dollar is higher and you can change money only in the bank. So I said, the bank is closed. So I said, what to do? Anyway, I'll pass because I don't know anybody to go and ask for anything. But then the Saturday came and I decided to go to a park. It's a very beautiful botan botanic garden, you know, autumn the other leaves and the flowers were going down and new flowers. Very beautiful, colorful, very beautiful garden. Just in front of YMC. So I was in full uniform and I said, okay, I will go and do my noon meditation in, in the botanic garden. So in between the botanic garden, <clears throat> there's a road which goes to the city center. I had to cross this road to go to the botanic garden. So I was crossing this road, I was on the other side of the road, and the, on the other, another side of the road, two young people, they were going to the city center, and they said to me, hi. I also said hi. So they went to the city center, I went to the botanic garden. I was roaming around, seeing, then finally I said, now I'll do my meditation. I found a very secluded, good place. So I did my meditation, and then I said, now I will go back to the YMCA. <clears throat> and then, just by chance, again, I met these two young people. And they said, oh, so who are you? What do what you do? I said, I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. I am from Manamarga, an international organization. <clears throat> So what you are doing here? 
Hij zei, ik ken meneer de fiets met Wissa. Hij zei, we hebben een testament met Wissa. Maar we zijn hier in de park en we celebreren de birthday party van een van mijn vrienden. Mijn vrienden was een hippie dag. En ze wilden niet volgen. You know, his father wanted to have his birthday party in his house or in a hotel. They come from a very well-to-do family. But he didn't want. So he just invited selected friends, about eight of them. And he was celebrating the birthday party in the park. So he said, if you don't mind, you can join us. I said, fine. So I joined the party and then of course, not a pool, you know. <laughs> Always bread, cheese, butter, milk, yogurt, and I was so hungry. <laughs> See how I arranged the food for me. Good lunch for free. <laughs> then, then, but they asked me so many questions, but then it was these two young people who became very interested. And they said that there's another party tonight. And since you are new here and you want to meet new people, you can join this party. <clears throat> and we will come to the wine and say, we'll pick you up at 11 in the night. It was an all night party. So I went with them. I didn't know it was a rock and roll party. <laughs> Such a loud music. You can hardly talk to anyone. And everybody was in his trip. Some smoking marijuana, some industry trees, some Heroin, you know, psychedelic, all. They're all in their own world. You can hardly talk to anybody. <laughs> and such a loud music, and all the food was thematic. I said, oh, what the hell the hell these people have brought me? But I cannot also go back. First, because I had no money for the taxi. And second, I didn't want to offend these two people, these two young people. So they stayed there until 3 o'clock in the morning. Party was just the one, but they decided to go. So they brought me the YMCA. And this is the YMCA is very expensive. And <clears throat> you, <clears throat> you can rent a flat for the, that amount. So tomorrow we will come, Sunday, they came with the newspaper. You know, they advertise people. They advertise flats, which is back end. And you can just go and see yourself. And if you like, you take it. So we went to send several flats. We decided to take one flat because the rent was reasonable and flat was good. But it was dirty, so I told the owner, please get it clean when I come tomorrow. So tomorrow they came and they brought me to the flat. But he didn't get it clean, so I had a very poor impression about the owner. I had to clean the whole flat. And then one day I told these two young people, please bring me to the Chosmical Society. You know, just because society, the society you know, where they, they are very interested in mysticism, mm-hmm. occultism, yoga, meditation. So I thought I would find somebody there. So they brought me to the Chosmical Society, and I was talking with the secretary because the president was not there. And she said, Can you please make me, make, make, help me to meet this president? She said, No, he's very busy, you know. Blah, blah, he has no time and all that. I said, look, you are a secretary. Your job is to make an appointment. You call him. If he said busy, he cannot meet me, fine. So she called and he gave the appointment. So it was Monday when we went there and they gave the appointment for Thursday. So we went to the successful society and he was sitting in the office with the secretary and some another member of the school. And <clears throat> then I introduced myself. When I introduced myself, then he brought me around the Chesterfield like Society, the whole building, you know. This is library, this is the meditation room, this is the lecture hall and all that. And actually he was looking for a room where just two of us can sit down and talk together. But all the rooms were busy. So we became, became met with the office room. And I told them, I told him I am from Anamarga and I will upset very much if you can organize a lecture for me in the Chesterfield Society. He said, Dada, yes, I am very interested in what you said and I want to know about Anamarga. But 
Transfer Society, they have lecture only once a month, and the lecturer and the topic is fixed until October. That was April. So I can organize a talk for you only in November. That's too long to wait. April, May, June, July. I was very disappointed. But he said, that well, you are free to come in. We have open a place where the major member comes and they, they discuss, they study, they took the book of library and people like you, they will be very interested because you have something new to offer. So you are welcome all the time, as a point. Then I was leaving. When I was leaving, I told you that another member of the Sulfur Society who was listening to me, conversation between me and the president. So he approached me and he said, I said, yeah, I can arrange a talk for you. I said, that would be very fine. So he picked up the phone and he talked to a, a lady who, who owns a yoga center and who is a yoga instructor. And he said, brother, <laughs> they will come and pick you up on Saturday. That was Thursday, mm -hmm. one day after. He just give me your address. So I gave him my address, the flight I was staying. And they will come and pick you up, and you go, and you give your talk, because everything is already arranged. So actually, this uh, lady, she was from, she was originally from Czechoslovakia. And those days, Czechoslovakia was communist. Mm -hmm. So yoga is not allowed. So she, she was very interested in the practice of yoga. So she migrated to Australia and she started this yoga center. But she herself was interested in meditation. She was teaching Hatha Yoga, but she was interested in meditation. So out of these 200 uh, students, she has organized a group of about 30 students who are interested in meditation and they had meeting twice a month, Saturdays. So that Saturday was supposed to be a meeting and they were also looking for a lecture. <laughs> So they he to be accepted, you know, for me to give a lecture. So I went there, I was introduced, and he gave a lecture, and I asked lecture so many questions. And they were so impressed that they decided to organize another lecture, a special lecture, just for their friends and relatives. And at the <clears throat> end of the lecture, I announced, now I'm looking for a place to stay, because the place I'm staying is I'm not happy because it's very dirty, and you know, what happened with the owner. And then nobody said anything, they left. Then this lady, who is the owner of this yoga center, I still remember, Elwood Yoga Center. That's the name of the area, Elwood. So she put the name, Elwood Yoga Center. And I know I still remember the name of the lady, Vera Rundas. So she slowed me down, I said, yeah, this is the <clears throat> kitchen, this is dining hall, this is yoga room, this is a guest room, this is the garden, and this is, if you don't mind, you can stay here for free. So you remember, at, in the Church Society meeting, if the president had found a separate room, that we will talk, two of us, and the senior member will not hear our conversation. So it was purposely done in a such a way that we come back to the office so that he will listen to our conversation and he can he will organize the talk. So see how it is pre-planned, a cosmic plan. And then <clears throat> next day again these two young people came. I had already initiated them, and they have uh, they, they were university students, but one of them had a car. So next day they came and they brought me to this. I still remember the name. One name was George, and the other name was John. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> one of them was very, very intellectual, always thinking and thinking. <laughs> so sometimes when he come to me, see me, we do medicine, and then I see he was, he was lost, you know. <laughs> then I had to ask him, what you are thinking? He said, Dada, I'm, I'm thinking, why I came to this planet? What's the purpose in my life? I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> then 
be married next Sunday, you know? <laughs> so this lady has already prepared curry and rice for lunch. She could be alive about 1.30 because she finished her yoga class, noon yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> and she already cooked curry rice. So we had a lunch. She and these two students, me, and she had one young boy, only eight years old. <clears throat> so we had lunch together. <clears throat> And then um, she saw my boom and she said, Dada, feel free. If you need anything, you just tell me. No, every day after finishing your class, she will cook lunch for me. And she, me, and her son will eat lunch together because her husband was in a holiday. She didn't stay in the yoga center. She had another house, very near, very close to there. She was staying with her husband and the son. But the husband had gone to Europe for, for the vacation. So he was not there. So every day, and then whenever I go out, she would give me money for the transport. Then after I initiated many people, they started them to cry right there in her yoga center. And, you know, I really felt that she was my mother. At the time, I was only 25 years, 26, and she was in her 50s. So I realized I have left one mother, but I have found two mothers because also when I was working in India, there's a lady who was just like my mother, you know. Every time before I go to sleep, she would give me a glass of milk, brother, please drink. And if I fall asleep, she'll wake me up. No, I have not taken your milk. Yet. So that's how Anna Marga started in Australia. How did you get invited to Perth? Huh? How did you get invited to Perth? Perth? Yeah. Was it the ah, then, but how I got to the Perth, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> then, um, what happened was, after I stayed with Lady two months, she herself suggested that you should have your own center. But I said, I have no money. She said, no, Dada, you said, that after I said, I will go to New Zealand. So whenever the Margis come for Dharm Chakra, I ask them to give some donation for your trip to New Zealand. So I have collected some money, and I put up some money, and let's look for a place for you to start the yoga center. So <clears throat> we looked and we found a place. Uh, and one story building, the owner was living down, and there's a room upstairs, fully carpeted. One room, single room, carpeted mm -hmm. living room, big enough for me to have Dham Chakra, toilet bathroom. So that was sufficient for me. So those days you pay rent weekly. And then you take this flat, you pay one week in advance. So she paid for the two weeks rent, and she gave me some money for my maintenance, food and all that. And she said, but Dada, how are people will know you that you are here? So she just suggested, she ordered a separate, she had a telephone down, but she had another telephone, there was no mobile phone, only landline, fixed, fixed phone, landline. So, and she said, you put your name in the yellow pages of the phone so that when people look yoga, they will see you are there. So what name? So I invented the name, Anna Marga Intuitional Science Association. And we put in the yellow pages in the yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my address, my name, my telephone. So people, of course, people started contacting me. And then somehow, there's a Margi couple in Perth from America. Yes. I don't know the name. Huh? Kapil and Karuna. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I don't know how they found out that I was in Melbourne. So they called me. So it was actually, I found out, it was Kapil who called me. And he said, why don't you come to Perth? I said, how can I come to Perth? I have no money. 
So that I don't worry. We will send you the ticket. So the day I was traveling was Baba's birthday. And we had a very nice Akhandakir tent. <laughs> I gave the Dhamsastra and then they brought me to the airport. I took the flight. I went to the Perth. And when I left Melbourne, it was the same time in the Perth. I was <laughs> surprised how it is. <laughs> and it's two hour flight, more than two hours flight. So anything I found out about this change of time, you know. <laughs> and they received him in the airport. And they organized many lectures, you know, mm. in different yoga centers, Shivananda, this guru, and they organized a retreat. Mm. That's where I met you. <laughs> and I initiated you there. And you attended the retreat. Mm. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's how. And then, of course, they were very sincere and dedicated Margi. Mm. So they started the unit, and they invited me many times. They organized many retreats subsequently. And that's where I met one young man who was from New Zealand. And he was in India staying in Assam for three months, learning Hatha Yoga, Pranayama, all that. But they never gave him any shisha. So he said to me, he came personally after the retreat, that I am looking for a guru. I was in India, I lived in Aslam, I learned many things, but I never found the Guru. So I said, I am not the Guru, but I will help you to find the Guru. And then I initiated him, and he invited me to Auckland. And he said, how I will go there? He said, I will send you the ticket. What was his name? Huh? His name. Dinkar. Dinkar. So <laughs> he sent me the ticket. <laughs> I went to New Zealand and Auckland and they organized many talks. First talk, only five people came. Mm -hmm. And I talked for about one and a half hours. But all five people got initiated. Mm -hmm. And those that I initiated some sisters also because those that are been allowed mm -hmm. to initiate sisters. And no this. And he organized a retreat. About 20 people came in the retreat, you know. I was there only for about two weeks. And very successful. And then we organized the unit. Dhamtakra started there. That's how the Anamarga started in Auckland, New Zealand. Mm. 